Hello, dear colleagues, good afternoon. Today, my topic is From Edge to Cloud Enable Domestic GPU Market. Well, I don't have so many technical details like the previous speakers have mentioned about. What I'm going to tell you about is more to answer three questions. Why Inno Silicon wanted to manufacture silicon or up graphic cards and how do we do it and what's the progress right now? Well, first of all, some introduction of the company also to answer the first question, why we wanted to build graphic cards. Inno Silicon is an IP company founded in 2006, now with 16 years of uh, uh, development and history. Now we have over 800 headcounts and still growing. Our offices are uh, located in uh, many cities across the China mainland. Zhuhai, Wuhan, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Suzhou, Xi'an, Chengdu, and Dalian. And we have overseas offices in Silicon Valley, London, and uh, Toronto. And the four numbers you see on the screen right now, the first one is that uh, the, we have products supporting process nodes from 0 0.11 micron to 5 nanometer. And uh, we have now over uh, 5 billion high-end SOC mass produced and shipped. And every year we have uh, 100,000 FinFET wafers mass produced and we have over 300 customers now. And behind these numbers, I want to express that in the IP industry, in the silicon has been holding on to doing the designs and accumulating our experiences. Behind these numbers, it's also the fundamentals for us to be able to go across the boundary and do some more. Uh, works and uh, business in other fields such as uh, GPU or even graphic cards. Since the founding of you know, silicon from DDR4 and then to the specific computing devices, then to storage, connections in the, uh, in the services and uh, many other IPs together with our GPU business today, InnoSilicon is building a layout of uh, fundamental computation chips. And uh, back to the first question I mentioned, uh, the reason we not want to build GPU is to, to find an addressing point so that we can connect all these technologies on GPU as a carrier for that. So with those ability being built, of course, the computation power is not simply enough. We need to have customers and products and demands there. Now, what we are quite favorable about is two main markets in China. One is cloud gaming. On the right side, you could see it tells you that every year the cloud gaming market size grows by a significant margin, 100% in the first years, and then in recent years a little bit slower, but still 20 to 30% every year. And in this cloud gaming market, one thing which is easy to do and uh, uh, the performance is pretty good because the traditional desktop, well, they can do that. But for IMG chips, those mobile specialized chips in such type of markets actually can make a great balance between computation power and the power consumption. Because in this market, well, many of the application are mobile games and the RMG uh, chips are actually very suitable for the cloud gaming, for mobile games. And another market is the Xinchuan market. The Xinchuan market actually is a big concept and it covers a lot. And I'm going to, I'm not going to mention every part within that market. But why the Xinchuan market exists and how it's going to uh, exist for a very long time or not? Well, in the past years, there had been some uh, big geopolitical incidents in the past years.
including Donald had been making Donald Trump had been making all these maneuvering and actions, and the big countries began to realize that we must have self-mastered fundamental science and the technology capabilities. It's necessary. So in recent years, commerce field or in the political field or for just normal citizens, we have agreed on a large scale that we need to have our own basic scientific capability. And we have to be dedicated to that for a long period of time. And that means I listed the two segments here. Those segments and similar segments will increase in numbers and scale. With more demand in the market, that means we can support companies to go further in this field. And from our point of view, I think this is a long-term thing. It's a long-term market. And let's take a look at what we are doing. We adhere to the spirit of uh, uh, truth-seeking and being practical. We didn't start from scratch. We cooperated strategically with uh, IMG experts. And we know that IMG have the experience of uh, several decades. And Actually, uh, they uh, have uh, products in the uh, high-end uh, market as well uh, as in the laptop uh, uh, segment. And relying on their accumulation and their after-sales uh, after service, uh, we shortened our R&D uh, cycle uh, of uh, chips. So we can really launch our product in the market very fast. And with our own capability in inner silicon, and also we have uh, the licensing, the other thing we need is strong software capability. And you know that in GPU, it is quite special compared to other chip segments because GPU relies more on the software in respect of the driver as well as the software services. And uh, companies like NVIDIA, they already announced that they are no longer just a chip company. It's more of a software company. So for in Silicon, we chose to recruit a group of top software talents. In Shanghai, we established a software team, and the members came from AMD, ARM, and other companies. They have a lot of experience in the GPU segment, and most of them have an experience of uh, more than 10 to 20 years, and that includes me. Maybe technically I'm a little weaker, that was why I'm here introducing to you guys about them. With those three, with the basic research capability, hardware capability, plus the IMG licensing, and the outstanding software team, with the three elements, in 2021, in November, we issued the Fantasy 1 family, high performance GPU. So there are four GPUs here. On the, on the left, this is the dual core BXT GPU. The second one is the single core BXT. Those two are fit for high performance desktop, and they can also add sensors. The third is mainly used for desktop, it's single core. Uh, maybe single core, maybe dual core, maybe four core. The fourth is a customized server 
In the main cloud frequency and in radiation, we did some customization. So let's take a look at Fantasy One. And its features. On the left, you can see the graphic features. On the right side, those are some other features. On the left, as I mentioned before, for Fantasy One, it uses the IMG BXD architecture. At the same time, it supports Vulkan 1.2 and OpenCL 3.x. Actually, that's 3.0. We didn't change much for those two. Basically, we used the software package provided by IMG. And the other two things are the special thing. For Silicon, we organized a very strong driver team, software driver team, and we successfully supported OpenGL 4.2, and uh, we didn't stop there. We want to add it to higher versions. And in Windows, we also did something. We are now supporting DirectX 11. And Finally, on Fantasy series, we uh, support Interlink Chiplet Interconnect. On the right side, it's more about PCIe. It supports Gen 4, it supports GDDR6 and 6X, 6X, and also it supports SRIOV because we want to support uh, virtualization, and it supports 4K display output, and it supports uh, multi chain hardware uh, codec, and it has uh, a small AI acceleration chip, so if there is uh, any need in AI, you can also use that. So the following slides are about which domestic platforms and OSs do we support. So at first, we already support like uh, x86 uh, and uh, some other platform, uh, other platforms and in domestic platform. Of course, we want to support the Xinjiang market, and uh, this is related to that. So we support Tongxing. And so the OS is uh, Tongxing, and uh, and on this desktop you can uh, run this benchmark. This is uh, Joe Marks too, but actually JFX Bench uh, or Manhattan or JFX Bench uh, subtests can be run there. And when we run the benchmark, we can also play a 4K video. At the same time, we can open some other desktop uh, apps like uh, PowerPoint slides. This is another platform. This is also by Tongxing. Uh, the CPU is uh, Sun, and uh, we also ran the benchmark, and also we are playing a 4K video, and there's a uh, PPD open. So on those two platforms, uh, we don't have any, we don't see any glitches, we don't see any, we don't feel any pressure. And this is, third, this is also Tongxing uh, OS plus Hygon uh, CPU. We didn't run the benchmark, but we, uh, Opened two 4K videos and we uh, opened a, a CAD uh, software. They can run simultaneously very smoothly on the platform. So just now we already said that it's more about the desktop. And the last one is the server. If I remember it correctly, uh, it's uh, on Quimpeng. 
and uh, this is uh, the picture we bring up, and actually we have gone much further than this, so on the server we can run some containers or even uh, simple virtualizations. And we have two server GPUs. One is a single core, the other is a uh, dual chip. So uh, one chip can enable like uh, uh, 10, like uh, Honor of Kings, but uh, for the two core, I can double that. And the last picture is from a month ago so on Windows. We also got a lot of uh, progress. So those two pictures are the desktop plus the uh, Windows SDK demo. So on Windows, we are uh, trying to progress the DirectX 11 development. We hope that Windows 10 can run uh, smoothly with our GPU. And when we are stable on DirectX 11, we will develop for DirectX 12. So this is the last slide for today. What I want to say is this market is large enough. I believe that we can really travel far enough for InnoSilicon to stop. After the release of Fantasy 1, we will continue to release Fantasy 2 and 3. So in the morning, a lot of sharings talked about ray tracing. So I can give you a sneak peek. So in the GPUs in the future, uh, we will support ray tracing. Thank you.